I've got so much good stuff to share with you this morning. Do not go away, including I'll be launching my next live event, training live event this morning for you. You have the first first chance to uh, to register for that. So hang around for that. Also, this morning, I want to talk about what could be the missing link in your voiceover marketing efforts. So that's uh, that's what we're going to get into today. And it's also, it's Q&A Friday on top of all of that. So if you have a question burning on your mind, throw it in the, uh, in the, uh, the chat, the live chat, and I'll get to some of those here in just a bit. Good morning. I am Bill DeWeese. I'm a professional voiceover talent. For the past 17 years, I've been sitting in my home studio. I've recorded over 10,000 paid voiceover projects in every genre of voiceover imaginable. I'm a voiceover coach, and what I do as a coach is I not only train people to perform, which is certainly a big part of being a successful voiceover talent, but ultimately it's all for the goal of helping them to make money or more money in voiceover. And that's why we gather every weekday morning at about this time to share a thought, a tip, a strategy, something to help you move closer to voiceover profitability or greater profitability. And I'm so glad and thankful that you're here this morning. If you don't mind, take a moment. Uh, share your name and where you're watching or listening from this morning. We certainly have a worldwide audience, and I appreciate those of you who make the time. Some of you, I mean, literally at all hours of the day and night all around the world that you actually show up for the live stream instead of waiting to watch it after it's after the recording's posted. And I really appreciate you for that. So let's talk some voiceover marketing for a few moments, because the gap between often not between where you're at and where you want to be assuming you've got the audio right and your performance skills are solid to get where you want to go, that, that the bridge is it's the marketing piece. It's getting your voice in front of the right people. And, and by now I'm sure you're, most of you are very familiar with the different platforms out there, whether it's pay to play, whether you're getting an agent, uh, there's a multitude of ways, which is incredibly awesome. A multitude of ways to get work now compared to when I first got started. Uh, so it gets, <laughs> I sound like the parent who's tell, telling their child how much easier it is for them than it was back for them when they had to walk uphill in three feet of snow to, to school and back home again. Uh, and that's, I'm, I apologize. That's not what I'm trying to, that's not what I'm trying to communicate. But the point is it's evolved and there are more opportunities uh, for, there's more jobs, but there's more ways to get those jobs. But what I want to talk to you about is something that you may be overlooking in your marketing mix. As a matter of fact, in my experience, I find that most people overlook at it. And I think it's because they perceive it to be, to be difficult. It's not difficult, but it certainly requires effort as, you know, as does anything that, that it's worth, worth uh, doing. But let's talk about direct marketing for a while. So you're, you're on the platforms. You know, there's so many platforms, I'm not even going to begin to list them, but you're on the platforms, you're auditioning, uh, you're competing for work that way. Perhaps you have an agent or two and you're doing auditions, but you're not quite where you want to be and you need more work. Well, the way that you can fill that gap and, and the way that, that I have filled that gap over the years is through direct marketing. And what I mean by that, first of all, this is a method. This is not new. Direct marketing is the oldest most tried and true, proven, solid way to get customers for products and services that's ever been created. It's where you, as a service provider, take your message directly to the person who may hire you or can hire you and may want to hire you if they hear you without going through a third party, whether that is an agency, whether that's a, uh, or a production company, or a platform. It's going directly to them. It's done in two ways. Telephone by email. Email by far is the most convenient, although I have found telephone. If you have the time to be able to do it and can operate within the proper time zones or, you know, where your clients are, uh, it can be highly successful uh, and highly profitable as well. But when I'm talking about direct marketing, I'm talking about sending in phone call or email, we'll just say email for the sake of this conversation, sending out emails to the people that are prospective clients, the people that might want to hire you. And if it seems like a daunting task, it is. I mean, it's a, it's a job, but there is no more direct way to get the message to the people. So I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you. 
Number one, doing direct marketing is a, it's a numbers, very, everything's a numbers game. I talk about that. I know to the point where you're probably tired of hearing me say it, but it's so true. It's not more true in any other area of voiceover than it is for direct marketing. I mean, it, it takes numbers. You can't send out 10 emails. You can't send out a hundred emails or 200 emails and expect you're going to get a job out of that. I mean, you may, you know, anything can happen, but you have to understand that it typically takes a lot, hundreds of emails to get what we call a warm response. So the process is emails or phone calls go out. And from this mass of emails, a few people will respond back and say, hey, nice demos. Thanks for sending those. Uh, we'll keep you, if something comes up, we'll keep you in mind. Rarely does somebody say, hey, I've got a job. I mean, it does happen. As a matter of fact, just I think yesterday or the day before, I received an email back from a direct marketing email that was sent out. And, and uh, they were like, hey, I've got this job. Can you give me a quote on it? Because they needed somebody right away. So that does happen. That does happen. But you have to expect that it's, it takes a lot. You put a lot into this, the funnel and a few begin to trickle out of the bottom. But if you continually feed that funnel, you will create a continuous stream of prospective clients, some of which will end up becoming your actual clients. Some of those clients will end up becoming regular clients. So are you up for that challenge? If so, just a couple of thoughts. Number one, you don't need a fancy CRM, customer relationship management software program to do this. I've, I've worked in sales, different companies way back in the day, and I've used uh, salesforce.com. I've used ACT. I'm very familiar with CRMs, and I don't use one for voiceover. Gmail handles, uh, and I have a Bill, Bill DeWeese uh, email that I use for my voiceover business, but it's all done through, integrated through the, the Google suite of products. And Google is just a wonderful way to be able to track conversations and it, it tracks everything that I need to know. Now, if you want to spend more time on it, you can. I just haven't found that to be necessary for me. Um, when you're sending out emails, you know, don't, don't blind carbon copy like 500 people and send, the, send it out, make it personal. And you can either do that one by one or you can use a service like a MailChimp or something like that where it actually puts that person's name, you know, hello, Bill and makes it personalized, which is certainly worth your while. So that's something to, you know, something to keep in mind. Also, here's the other thing. And then uh, this will be the last tip I share with you regarding direct marketing. Don't feel the need to track every email you send. That would be, it, the pay, you know, it will reduce the profitability of what you do because of the time and energy spent. What you need to do is track the people who respond. The, and I, I remember learning this a number of years back when I was working uh, with, with businesses who were smaller to medium-sized businesses and they had such incredible turnover that people, you know, the, the people that you would reach out to today wouldn't be the same people that would be there two years from now. I mean, the turnover is just crazy. And so what I learned was, oh, I only needed to be concerned with people who responded back to me positively. So what I would do is systematically, I would use Google and I would just search by, you know, it's, you could, it's a global business. You can do the entire world searching content producers, video producers. Um, but you might want to start with a region just to make it more manageable. And then, you know, I, I would do my, send out the emails and all I care about are the people who respond back to me. I care about the people who don't because I, you know, make my way around and eventually they'll get another email. You know, and if they do, and if it, if it happens to be, if they, you know, they got it from me six months ago, a year ago, and I didn't hear back from them, great. Well, they'll get another one. Uh, but what I'm looking for, the people who respond to me, they go into my database. They're the people that I cultivate to take from warm prospect to actual client. So that's, I know that's a very kind of high level general overview, but those are the, the, the basics of direct marketing. And I wanted to mention to you, um, one of my students, former student, his name's Todd Barsonis, uh, who came into my program a number of years back, has become a highly successful, highly paid voiceover talent. He did that because he took direct marketing, he took that piece of it, he elevated it to an art form. And that is pretty much, if not the only way, it's, it's, it's like probably 95% of everything that he does is in terms of marketing, and I know he's on Fiverr platform too, and he does quite well there. But in terms of outbound marketing, it is direct marketing. 
and uh, he's built yet a, a, again a very a very uh, substantial income in voiceover. And beyond that, a couple of years ago, he and uh, and his sons he has enough enough sons to have a, a basketball team. They they started uh, a company to where they provide that service to other voiceover talent. It's called VOMarketingPro.com. I'm going to put that in the uh, chat here so you'll see the VO Marketing Pro. Now, let me just say a word or two before I before I continue on about that, and that's this: that direct marketing is not for everyone. If you're brand new to voiceover, it's not for you. If you've only if you only have your DIY demos right now and not a professionally produced demo, it's not for you because it is it's so competitive and you're you're only dealing with you're not getting a ton of response back as it is. So having a DIY demo will make it extremely uh, time intensive. So a pro demo will increase the response rate that you get back substantially. Um, and it's for you know it's for those who are you know willing to do the back and forth. And um, and again, it can be I think it's I think it's a powerful way to market. So if you're and if you're you know if you can audition well, you're you're a competitive auditioner, then this is something that could be for you. And uh, if it's something that you want to have outsourced to somebody else, as a matter of fact, I pay voiceover marketing pro. I just, I used to do all that stuff myself. Now I pay them to do it for me because they can do it on a much larger scale than I could ever imagine doing it. Because this is what, like I said, they've elevated this to an art form. Um, so anyhow, if you reach out to them, just say, Bill DeWeese sent you via marketing pro.com. Uh, Todd's the guy. And, um, they're really, really, really good at what they do. All right. So uh, again, I'm going to be taking a look at some of your questions here in just a couple of minutes. So if you have a question, throw it up in the live stream chat. But before we do that, my next live event training class is coming up March the 21st. That's Tuesday. March the 21st. It's Tuesday. And it's going to be an event on becoming a powerhouse voiceover performer. It's all about winning more auditions. It's about blowing your clients away with the work that you do so they keep coming back over and over again. Are you ready to up your performance game? If you are, then this class is for you. Coming up Tuesday, March 21st. Now, uh, before I give you the the registration for this so you can go there, I just want to let you know that it is a live event, but that doesn't mean that if you can't be there, the class is not beneficial because if you get the class, you have the class, you have access to it. So it's recorded. It's, you know, you can access it on demand, uh, whether you've been, whether you're at the live event or not, whenever you want, as long, you know, forever. So that will be available to you. Now, here's the thing. Here's the, here's the rub. We limit it to the first 100 people so that there could be plenty of interaction. As soon as I'm done with this video, I'm sending out an email to over 28,000 people who follow um, my voiceover training. And it will be announced to them. But I'm telling you first, because I want to give, since you're somebody who shows up for my morning live stream, I want to give you first dibs if it's a class that you want to be in. And I would love to have you there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, the link is in the description of this video. And I'm also going to put it in the live chat right now. So there it is. So again, it will be limited to the first 100. You've got first crack at it. All right, let's see who's on this morning and what some of those questions are. Mark, how are you doing in Albuquerque? Hey, Stephen Bucyrus, good morning to you. Phil in Tokyo, always good to have you on the live stream. Janet in Florida. Janet is faithful. You know, you are like one of the first people here every morning. I love it. Patrick in Maryland. And um, Sandra, how are you in Dallas, Fort Worth? We've got Michelle in Indianapolis, Jason in Mobile, Alabama, Anthony in Bellbuckle, Tennessee. Tess and Decula. Oh, remember to change your clocks. That's right. I have a love-hate relationship with a time change in March because I hate losing an hour of sleep. I hate it. But I tell you what, I, I tell you what makes up for it is the fact that we get an extra hour of light at the end of the day. I love long, long days. I would thrive in Alaska when they're, you know, when they have the long days. That would, that's, that's my jam right there. Don and Asbury Park, Tim in Salt Lake. Hey, Wade in Philadelphia. Uh, we've got Wayne in the Olympic Mountains. Bob, how are you doing in Reedsville, North Carolina? Friday is one of my busiest days trying to get to the week, weekend off. 
just west of Indianapolis. Hey, Tom. Uh, Neil in Fairfield. Carl Lynn, good morning from the Bellagio. Or from Bellagio, Italy. I say the Bellagio. I'm thinking Las Vegas. Uh, good morning, Carl Lynn. Thanks for being here this morning. And for you this evening. Hey, Tom, how's it going in sunny South Florida? Okay, here's okay. Here's the question. I never understood why you have a professional producer demo when you know you can't provide your provide your client the same high quality. Well, there's something to be said for the fact I understand what you're saying. What you're getting is a fully produced version of something. What we provide clients is just our voice, and oftentimes it's the raw version of that. The demo is showing them what we sound like within a fully produced product. So presumably what that client is going to do is take your voice and is going to create a fully produced product with it. So it's uh, so what we're showing them, we're basically we're selling ourselves by showing them what we sound like within a fully finished, polished, professionally produced product. Again, presumably that's what they'll take your voice and do with it. Not that we're not saying that what we're giving them is a fully produced. Now, you want to make sure that your audio sounds really good and that your voiceover sounds, it needs to sound very good. But when it goes, you know, when you, when somebody's producing a project, it goes through different layers of EQ and compression and, and processing. That's standard operating procedure. What we're doing, again, we're showing them the fight, what the final product can sound like with your voice. Uh, Doug in Greensboro. Thanks for the thousand video clips to help us understand the voiceover industry. Doug, thank you for that comment. Thank you for counting. I appreciate that. Um, Donald in California, Angel in California, Barb in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Hey, Rob, it's going to be 83 in Yuma today. Thanks for getting the haircut for us. <laughs> oh, Rob, hey, you're very welcome. It didn't come out as intended, but you know what? My hair grows like a weed, so come back in a few weeks and, and I'll need another one. A haircut, that is. Eric in Richmond, how are you doing? A great Friday and a better weekend to you as well. Christopher in uh, Dubuque, Iowa. John in Rhinebeck, New York. Mark, how are you doing? Are TV affiliates still worth marketing to? Are they hiring voiceover talent for local commercials? There's really, within that, Mark, there's a couple of things. Uh, is it still worth marketing for TV affiliate work? Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Aaron Bradley, a friend of mine uh, who lives out in San Diego, you know, he does, a, he's on, I think like eight different affiliates around the country, including here in Cincinnati and Chicago, where I came from. And, uh, he's taught a couple of classes to my students and I've got, you know, students who are now doing affiliate work for, for TV stations. Affiliate work is not commercial work though. Affiliate work is where, you know, you're more, you're the, 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 uh, image, the voice of the news for that particular CBS Fox, ABC, NBC, NBC, or whatever, you know, whatever the channel or network happens to be. So yes, that is still worth it. It's, it's a long haul thing. I mean, it's, it's a smaller market. So if you do that, you need to be well-trained for it, have the right demos for it and be prepared to market, you know, to break through in that market. It's not as general as the kind of stuff that I talk about. TV stations do use voiceover talent, but typically that's done through, you know, um, you know, you want to market yourself to people who produce commercials. It's hard. I mean, you can market to TV, individual TV stations. It'd be a hard way to do it. But uh, what the way I do it is I get on, I market myself to be on talent rosters of content producers. And that's how I get on local TV and radio commercials. Uh, hello from Chile, Louisville. How many times should I follow up after I send a marketing email? I don't follow up. I only follow up with the people who respond back to me. That's why I send them, you know, I do high volume because I'm not, think of it this way. Is it more effective to follow up with people who haven't responded back to you or follow up with people who have responded back to you? So let's say you send out 500 emails. Five people respond back positively to you. Let's just say hypothetically, it could be more, it could be less, but let's just say five people respond back to you. Is it more, does it make sense to go back and try to, to wrangle the other 495 who didn't respond back or to take those five, put them in your database so that you can continue to develop a, a relationship and do 500 more emails? 
I say do 500 more emails. Just worry about the five who responded back. I think it's the most efficient way to do it. Austin, how are you doing in sunny but snowy Iceland? Good to have you on the live stream this morning, Austin. Uh, Marietta in Costa Rica, or Mariella, I'm sorry, that's an L, not a T. Good morning, Mariella. Amanda. Uh, now, I wouldn't use Google Ads for voice acting. I'm not saying it wouldn't work at all, but I think it's probably one of the least efficient ways. Advertising is one of the least efficient ways. Uh, Luke in Ankara, Turkey. Hey, Luke, good to have you on today. Michelle in North Carolina. How important are bass traps for a home voiceover studio? Uh, I don't use them. If you have a very deep, bassy voice in a room that reverberates, it all depends. Do you have too much bass in your room? Is there too much bass bouncing around? If there is, if you have a hard time taming that through EQ, then you probably need bass traps. Uh, Melissa in San Diego. Hey, Ty in Warsaw, Indiana. Tim. Cranking out 10 to 20 auditions a day here. Love it. Bob. Uh, do most VO providers use three sets of rates, one based on number of words, uh, based hourly, and based on total project? Yeah, you know what? It's Bob, it's, uh, the whole rate is a very, you know, the, I don't worry too much about all of that. I start, I ask the client what their budget is, and, I, and from there I kind of negotiate. But, you know, if you're on Fiverr, typically people are paying by word. I have some clients who want to pay me an hourly rate, which is fine. That's that's them. The way I do my stuff, I, I basically price it per project. Um, but again, I you know you got to be flexible to work with them however they work. Yeah, you know, here's a really good point. Someone's saying a marketing effort may not show results for ten to thirteen months, and that's that's true. I mean, I've had, I've had stuff I've had immediate response to. I've had other stuff. It's taken, you know, years later, I hear back from somebody that I reached out to years ago. And then that's why you can't overthink it. You just get, you just got to keep putting it out there. You keep putting it out there. Some people will come to you quickly. Some it'll take a while. Some it will take forever. Most you'll never hear back from that's, that's marketing in any business. direct marketing, it would be advisable to have a website at that point. Your pro demo is a website. That's a good question, Tim. Hey, Steve. Have a good weekend. Bruce in Louisville. Hey, Missy in New York. You have a great day, too. Okay, let's see here. Well, guys, you know what? I am running over time here. I need to run. And don't forget what I'm going to do here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm getting ready to send an email out to over 28,000 people. Uh, to promote my voiceover performance class. Uh, it's limited to the first 100 people. I want you guys, again, to have access to it first. If you're interested, there's a link in the live stream chat. There's a link in the video below. Hope to see you in the class. But in the meantime, you guys have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon.